Hello everybody and welcome back to the second shelf and to another sort of chatty check-in um, about favorite fiction, my favorite fiction, um, but also about reading taste and the difference between the best book and your favorite book. Um, a week or two ago I uh, made a tag video, um, the reading taste tag. If you are interested and haven't watched it I will leave a link to this video down below and after I while I made the video, in preparation of the video, and also afterwards I, you know, got to thinking about my reading taste and how that developed. Um, and then serendipity, um, um, last Saturday, Saturday, no, the Saturday before last, uh, Brian from Bookish made his usual uh, Saturday hodgepodge video in which he talks about his reading and other things. Um, and one of the topics he touched upon was the difference between best books and favorite books. And that sort of spurred this video. Um, um, I will leave a link to Brian's video down below where you can watch the whole video or the segment about best books and favorite books because I thought that that's interesting. Um, and Brian is absolutely right. Sometimes, you know, the, a book that you appreciate uh, because it ha because of its literary value or because it's really crafted um, well or you can see, as it were, intellectually that it's a good book, but it will never be your favorite for some reason. And so what I want to do is I want to talk about a couple of books that I think are really good books, but they will never be favorites. Um, and other books that have flaws and I can see the flaws, but still I love them. And I want to I want to limit myself, you know, to books, not all time favorites and things like that, but to books I read fairly recently. So this year or maybe the end of last year. Um, and I want to start the discussion with a book uh, that I think is really good um, and a lot of people loved it. So for a lot of people, I would say it probably qualifies as a favorite book. Uh, but for me, it didn't quite work that way. And that is Je Joyce Carol Oates' latest book, uh, Night, Sleep, Death, The Stars, which will which was published earlier this year, I think in the summer or in the fall. It's quite a chunkster. And it's about a family um, uh, uh, after the father dies and then you have the mother and the siblings, so that the the children, and they each deal with the death and what it means for their life and how they want to move on in different ways. And it's it's really well written. I mean, Joyce Carol Oates can write, like da, of course she can. And it's it it, it the topic is interesting, you know, grief, but also family dynamics. Um, and how you deal with the death of a, a loved one in this book, the father or husband. Um, and there is a lot of emotion in there. Um, I think autobiographical emotion because Joyce Kell Oates lost a husband twice. Both her, uh, of her husbands died and she wrote a memoir, a grief memoir after the death of her first husband. So th there is definitely emotion in the book and still for some reason it just didn't work for me. I, I can't really explain why um, but it, it it's a good book but it will never be uh, one of my favorites. Joyce Carol Oates' book, of course, is just one example. Um, you know, I could probably mention 10 more. Um, a lot of Virginia Woolf's work. I recently read Between the Acts, um, which, again, I could see how intelligent the book was and how intellectually challenging. <sighs> but a favorite? No. But in, anyway, let's move on uh, to a favorite, some of the favorites. And I just want to talk about three. Um, and what I want to talk about, discuss is sometimes um, you, or at least I can see why the book resonated with me so much. There's a topic uh, that really resonates with me uh, or something, but I can't really explain why in this book, a topic that I'm really interested in resonates with me, whereas in another book, like in Joyce Carol Oates' book, it, it just doesn't. So 
But one of the books that I read uh, this year uh, and that I really loved uh, was Christina Baker Klein's book, A Piece of the World, which was published, I think, in 2017. Um, and uh, the book is about a topic that I'm interested in uh, because it's about a painter or at least partly about a painter and uh, Andrew Wyatt um, and one of his most famous paintings um, I will leave a picture no, up here um, is Christina's World um, he, he lived in the first half of the 20th century and he painted these realistic uh, portraits and landscapes, but, but mostly people um, in Maine. And uh, the, the, the picture, uh, Christina's world, is depicting a farm, as you can obviously see, um, and a young woman um, in the field. It looks like she's just you know, uh, sitting there, uh, but she's actually crawling. And the woman in the picture is Christina Olsen. And the book uh, by uh, Christina Baker Klein is about uh, Christina Olsen and her life, but also her relationship uh, with the painter Andrew Wyatt. Um, so the book is set in, in, in Cushing in Maine, uh, where Christina and her family later on it's only her brother, uh, live in this small farm. It's quite a harsh uh, life, a harsh world. Um, and Christina has a, um, um, a hereditary illness. Um, the name I'm not even going to try to pronounce, but it what it means is that you slowly but surely you uh, lose um, the, the, the capability of using your arms and legs. So that's why she is crawling in that picture because she can't walk anymore. So the the I'm I love Andrew Wyatt's work. I was interested in the life of this woman and I I just love this book. Uh, I read it together with Doris from all the books and she was more like, yeah, hmm, okay, but not it it just didn't resonate with her, and I can see the flaws of the book. It's it's, you know, uh, sometimes a little bit might be considered or come across as a little bit boring. Um, it it's very quiet, but I don't know. It it this book really stuck with me. Uh, I love the atmosphere. I love the way uh, um, um, Baker Klein uh, dealt with Christina's life and didn't portray her as a victim and, you know, a pitiful person. Uh, but she was quite strong-willed and not always nice. She did a couple of things in her life, or at least in the book, that were... So she was a nuanced uh, a person, but... Yeah, I can sum up all the things that I thought were brilliant in the book but like I said, I read it with Doris and it just didn't work for her in the same way it did for me. Oh, and I should mention, uh, um, um, I did uh, include um, the Baker Klein book in the tops and flops of June um, as a surprise. So it, it obviously it surprised me that I loved it so much even back when I first read it. I have reread it um, in the meantime. Anyway, um, another book that I read this year, which was actually recommended to me by Sean from Sean the Book Maniac, which completely, yeah, blew me away in terms of how much I love the book, even though I know that it's probably, ha again, has its flaws, and that is, whoops, <laughs> No, I don't want to show you the backside of the book. <laughs> Rules for Visiting by Jessica Francis Kane, uh, which was published uh, in 2019. And here, uh, obviously, Sean knows my taste better than I do, because if I had just read the blurb, um, I probably wouldn't have picked up the book. It's about um, a, a single uh, woman, May, who works as a gardener. And I can stop you right there. I would have put the book down because I'm not interested in gardening at all. Never was. It's just not my thing. But anyway, May works as a gardener um, and uh, she comes into some money, which is explained why in the book, and she decides to take sort of a sabbatical some time off and visit 
friends, female friends that she has lost touch with, um, uh, either because they moved away or for other reasons. So she tries to reconnect with some of her female friends. And the book is about these travels and what she discovers, but it's also quite a bit about trees and gardening. And I thought it was utterly, utterly charming. Um, it almost read like a memoir. It had this, this for me, this really intimate feeling of um, a real person, not a fictional person, but a real person talking about her life and her friendships and what went wrong or worked out with, you know, the reconnect and what, and it has, it's also quite humorous about the you know the rules for for visiting in the end of uh, towards the end of the book there's this list about uh, um, I know don't know whether I can find it yeah uh, rules for visiting and the first one is do not arrive telling stories about the difficulties of your trip so it, it has this warm humor that I really liked I um, I can also see that once I you know got over myself with the gardening I, that I liked it because it was about female friendship and a woman not uh, focusing on a relationship but on friendship. That was probably, if I try to reason why I like this book so much, that was probably one of the reasons. But I, yeah, I it, it just gave me the warm, fuzzy feeling and still does when I think about the book you know, I get all warm and cozy and I, I absolutely adored it. So thank you, Sean, uh, for recommending this book to me. And the third book and last book I want to talk to you about, which is one of my favorites I actually read last year, but reread this year. So it sort of counts as a 2020 read. Um, and for me, this was, I guess, the most surprising. And that is Jane Rawson uh, from The Wreck, which was published uh, 2017. Um, I don't have a copy of the book at the moment because I lend it to a friend uh, to read um, and will probably never get it back. So I will have to buy another copy. But anyway, uh, Jane Rawson is an Australian author and this was my first book by her. And I picked it up because I wanted to read more uh, Aussie lit, Australian literature. Um, but again, this was a book from... Um, the the things I knew about that I had very little expectation of liking it or even loving it because there is it's set in 1859 after a shipwreck uh, when uh, there's one survivor George um, and then there is this yeah un non earthly creature uh, from another dimension. Um, and the the life of George and this other creature get intertwined. I'm not that interested in all kinds of ship stuff, not at all. Um, I don't like magical realism normally at all, and this book is kind of magical realism with this uh, creature from this other dimension. And the third thing that I normally really don't like, part of the book is told from the perspective of uh, Henry, uh, the 10-year-old son, um, because, you know, you made time jumps because... George doesn't have a son when he is rescued, but then he gets married and he has a son. And this creature, um, this outer worldly creature is part of the family story and not always in a good way. So there are plenty of things that I would normally say if you told me about this book in terms of, you know, you have this um, child protagonist, you have uh, ships and shipwrecks and you have magical realism, I would immediately say, not for me. But I love the book. I thought it was brilliant. I loved the story of this, uh, this creature and how it, it was really sad, um, the life of this creature, but also um, uh, sad because it destroyed parts of the family life. I'm, I'm not going to get into spoiler territory. Um, yeah, I thought the atmosphere uh, of the, you know, second half of the 19th century, the this Australian coastal town, this little village, 
everything that I normally don't like just worked brilliantly for me in this particular book. And I really, I don't know, I can't tell you why. Anyway, these are three books uh, that I read, reread this year that I really loved. And one book that I can appreciate because it's brilliant and it's well done and it just didn't work for me. So there's, I, I want to think about this, this topic some more. Um, uh, and I, I, I'd love to have your input in, in books that you really, really love, even though they're not maybe not perfect and maybe have bad ratings or whatever. Uh, more in general, whether you also have this distinction of best books and favorite books, I'm really interested to hear. Um, and maybe we can continue this discussion about best versus uh, favorites. Anyway, this was it for uh, the chatty check-in about favorite books. Um, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've liked it and I hope you're all still safe and healthy. Looking very much forward to your comments and I'll see you all soon in the next one.